Shortly after 7 p.m. on the evening of December 21st, 1988, a bomb exploded on board a Boeing 747 passenger flight while flying over the town of Lockerbie in Scotland. The bomb killed all 243 passengers and 16 crew on board, in what became known as the Lockerbie bombing. The plane, Pan Am Flight 103, was en route from Frankfurt, Germany to Detroit, Michigan. Large sections of the aircraft crashed in a residential street in the town, killing 11 residents. With a total of 270 fatalities, it is the largest terrorist attack in the history of the United Kingdom. Lockerbie is a small town in the region of Dumfries and Galloway in the southwest of Scotland. Located roughly 120 kilometers, 75 miles from Glasgow, and 25 kilometers or 16 miles from the English border, the town is home to just over 4,000 inhabitants. On the evening of the disaster, just after 7 p.m. local time, the plane crossed the Solway Firth at an altitude of 31,000 feet, 9,400 meters, traveling at a speed of 580 kilometers per hour, or 360 miles an hour. At 7.02, Flight 103 received its oceanic route clearance from nearby Prestwick Airport. However, this was not acknowledged by the flight crew. The flight's transponder code, or squawk, then flickered off on the radar. As a result, air traffic control attempted to make contact with the flight crew, to no avail. The cockpit voice recorder on board Pan Am Flight 103 recorded a loud noise shortly before 7.03. Five separate echoes appeared on radar instead of the usual one, indicating a catastrophic explosion. A nearby British Airways pilot, flying near the town of Carlisle, called Scottish authorities to report that he could see a huge fire on the ground. The explosion blew a 50 centimeter or 20 inch hole in the left side of the plane's fuselage. No distress call was recorded. The explosion in the aircraft hold was magnified by the uncontrolled decompression of the fuselage due to the large difference in pressure between the aircraft's exterior and interior. The aircraft's elevator and rudder controls were disrupted, causing the fuselage to pitch downwards and to the left. Investigators from the Department of Transport's Air Accidents Investigation Branch concluded that the nose of the plane was blown off, separating from the fuselage within three seconds of the explosion. It then hit the starboard number three engine before plummeting to the ground some distance outside the town. The rear fuselage, parts of the baggage hold, and three landing gear units landed at Rosebank Crescent. The fuselage, consisting of the main wing box structure, landed in Sherwood Crescent, destroying three homes and creating a large impact crater. The plane's fuel ignited, causing several fires, and destroyed several other houses. Investigators determined that both wings had landed in the Sherwood Crescent crater. The nose section, which had crashed into a field 4 kilometers, 2.5 miles outside of Lockerbie, contained several passengers and crew that were still strapped into their seats. A flight attendant was found alive by a farmer's wife, but died before help could be summoned. In fact, a pathologist's report concluded that at least two of these passengers might have survived if they had been found soon enough. In the days leading up to the bombing, two separate warnings had been issued. On December 5th, 16 days before the attack, a man with an Arabic accent telephoned the US Embassy in Helsinki, Finland. He stated that within the next two weeks, a Pan Am flight from Frankfurt to the United States would be blown up by somebody representing the Abu Nidal organization. A second warning, this time from the Palestine Liberation Organization, stated that extremists might launch terrorist attacks to undermine ongoing talks between the United States and the PLO. In the aftermath, numerous groups claimed responsibility for the attack. Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi, in 2003, took responsibility for the Lockerbie bombing and paid compensation to the victims' families, though he maintained he had not ordered the attack. The wreckage of the crash was scattered over 2,000 square kilometers, or 770 square miles. The fuselage was reconstructed, revealing a 20-inch hole consistent with an explosion in the forward cargo hold. 
Fragments of a Samsonite suitcase believed to have contained the bomb were recovered, together with parts of a circuit board and radio cassette player used to conceal the bomb. Items of baby clothing, which were proven to be made in Malta and were thought to have come from the same suitcase, were traced to a Maltese merchant. He claimed to have sold the clothes to a man of Libyan appearance. The man Abdel Basset al Magrahi, an alleged Libyan intelligence officer, along with another Libyan national, were charged with the bombing. In 1999, Colonel Gaddafi arranged to hand over both men to Scottish police for trial. On January 31, 2001, Magrahi was convicted of murder by a panel of three Scottish judges and sentenced to life in prison, but his fellow defendant was acquitted. In a highly controversial move, he was released from prison on compassionate grounds on August 20, 2009, due to his terminal cancer diagnosis. He died in 2012. Motive for the attack can be traced back to Libya's ongoing military confrontations with the United States, dating back to the 1980s. Pan Am, which sought compensation from the Libyan government, went bankrupt partly as a result of the attack. In 1992, a US federal court found the airline guilty of willful misconduct for not implementing their new security program of searching unaccompanied luggage by hand. The airline relied upon the less effective method of X-ray screening.